Good morning, everyone. How are you? Today, I wanted to take you on a tour of our creeping fig that we've had in the ground for one year. It's hard to believe that one whole year has passed by since we planted, I think it was 16 of them. And I wanted to show you how the plants that have been in the sun versus the ones that have been in the shade, they've kind of grown a little bit differently. So the three, all the way at the end, that's on the west side of our fence. Those are in the sun literally almost all day. And then we have a two that are closer to the shed and those are in the sun pretty much for the majority of the day. But the ones at the far end of the west side, they have grown almost more steadily up. So they haven't vined out, but they're more thick on the bottom and they're kind of growing at an equal pace. So you can see probably more of the wall, but down at the bottom, they're completely covered. Whereas the ones that are in the shade, and I'm, we're not gonna go down quite yet, but the ones that are in the shade, they have grown more in a vine type matter. I, I guess that's probably not the right term, but that's what's coming to my head. And so what you'll see, and at the end we'll show a full view of all of them, that uh, they're not quite as bushy on the bottom, but they've gone all the way to the top of the fence. And I forget, is this seven or eight feet? I don't know, I'm, I, I forget how tall the fence is, but I'll make sure I put it at the bottom. We have not touched these at all throughout the whole year, as far as trimming or cutting. We put this, um, I call I call it fishing line, that's not what it is. Fencing wire, that's what it is, fencing wire. Because I've seen where the creeping fig will look gorgeous and then be, because it becomes too heavy, it'll fall forward. And I didn't want that to happen to us. So you'll notice that some of them still haven't quite attached. And so the ones that had fallen forward, if they're, if they're long enough, we'll feed them up underneath the fencing wire and give it a, a chance to attach. So this last week we came through and made sure that the tops were all cut because we don't want it to encroach upon our neighbors. And there's a business on the other side of it, uh, of, on the other side of our fence, but we still don't want it to grow over on their side. This last week when we cut the top off, we came through and sheared the side. So as you see coming down, we've tried to keep it pretty close to the fence. The majority of these are in the shade. So it's funny how they've covered, like take for instance this one, almost the entire length of the, or the width or not length, height. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna get it right. The entire height of the wall, but they're in the shade all day. Uh, they all get equal water. And actually here in Central California, because of our strict water guidelines, so during the winter, these only got water once a week. And uh, we water in the morning and then the evening, and then I think it was April, we were able to switch it to three times a week. Thank goodness, because we're gonna have some 80s and 90s here in about 10 days. And then I wanted to also say this last week we fertilized them for the first time. So when we planted them, we put biotone in. And then we had not fertilized them at all until just, I think it was a week, week and a half ago, when we came through and did all the trimming. You'll see that there are many pieces of the creeping fig that haven't attached. So I'll, throughout the year, when I see pieces like this that are hanging out, instead of cutting them, if they are long enough, I will try and take it and feed it under here like this. Oh, I'll get it here. Hang on. And that way, because I don't want to lose that. I want I want to keep it, you know, so it'll hopefully attach to the wall. So if it's long enough, I will feed it through the line. Even, you know, there are some of them that still haven't, you know, grown that much. And that's okay, I don't wanna cut it, I just wanna leave it be. And if it does, it, you know, like I said, if it doesn't attach, I'll feed it up over the thing. As we move a little bit further down, you'll probably wonder why there are no plants right here. We have a German Shepherd, and he likes to walk the whole perimeter 
of our lawn, so we try and keep it clear for him. I do have some hydrangeas here that I've planted, and then a uh, clematis that I picked up on clearance. As soon as the hydrangeas begin to bloom, I'll make sure that I come out here and give you a little tour of them. They're beginning to bud up, but they're nowhere near ready to bloom yet. But they've fed, they have weathered our winter pretty good. We have a few nights where it can drop down into the 20s, uh, but mostly we just get 30s and 40s, so they've done pretty well. So hopefully you'll be able to see just how wonderfully they have grown. There are certain sections where they've just almost covered the entire wall. And as you see a photo at the very end, when we show you the whole wall, you're gonna see parts of the bottom of the creeping fig that almost look burned or dead. That's because of our German Shepherd. <laughs> And um, there's nothing I can really do about it. I probably need to look into something to, um, isn't there like a dog or cat spray, but I wanna make sure it's safe for my animal and that it won't harm the plants. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so glad we planted this creeping fig. It was probably one of the best decisions we've ever made. I hope that if you guys um, are looking to cover something that this is something you would consider because it's been a great performer for us and I garden in zone 9 and we're coming up on summer here just within a few weeks and we will easily have 100 plus temperatures for minimum four months <laughs> and so these have done amazing for the level of heat that we get I hope you guys are having a really great weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye.